Thursday's Thanksgiving and then Saturday is kind of like you're welcome. <laughs> From the Native Americans. It's the end of the Native American Heritage Month and we've been celebrating our involvement and, and people's recognition that we are here and Thanksgiving is due in large part to our Native peoples. So as Chief Jake Swamp says, every day is Thanksgiving and we should wake up every morning with a song of Thanksgiving in our hearts. <laughs> My grandmother made it for me. And then I have my squash blossom right here. It's um, turquoise and it's both double sided with my earrings. And then I have um, my sash belt, which is this red thing right here. I always have to wear this with um, my regalia. This is um, this is my pouch with all my medicine in it and all my um, good energy, that's how I call it. And then on my other pouch as well with everything I need. The students need to know they're living in an area here in Los Angeles that has a representation from nations, of American Indian nations from across the country. that it's two days after Thanksgiving because no one really knows about the native culture. No one knows like the actual history. Average American has no idea um, of what Native American is. And surprisingly, the biggest population is in LA of Native American community. Um, a lot of people don't know that. And other people don't know they're in your grocery store. <laughs> you know, they're you know they're probably living in your same apartment complex. We actually have a couple students that are actually dancers at the powwow, but a lot of people don't know that. Um, just two weeks ago, I was walking around trying to sell raffle tickets for to win our Pendleton blanket for our powwow and no one knew about the powwow that we have here on campus. My name is Les Peters. I'm actually an alumnus of uh, Cal State Long Beach. I've been coming to this powwow now for quite some time. I'm a Yakima. I'm from the Pacific Northwest and I'm a Navajo also but I uh, was raised on the Yakima Reservation. It was maybe about six seven years ago when the powwow had died down for a little bit and then we were asked as a drum to come and help them bring it back and so it was part of the staff and the community in Long Beach that came up here and helped uh, Northridge with getting their powwow back up and going. And the second year that I was here I was asked by the Dean at that time to take over as coordinator of the American Indian Studies program. And it was that second year that we revived the powwow, which had not been in operation for seven or eight years, I, I can't remember. And that time, uh, Tomas Katane and others, we joined hands and we started doing the powwow again. And this is really exciting to see where it has grown. Powwow really represents the urban Indian population. There are over 200,000 Indian people in the Los Angeles area and a powwow is a good way to bring people together, to bring families together, to see old friends and this powwow put on by the native students is one of those powwows that isn't pardon me, financed by a big casino with huge monies. It's coming here for the love of dancing and for the love of sharing with community. A lot of them are still being dislocated from their lands. We see a lot of this all over, still going on, uh, where uh, predominant countries are taking over smaller countries and, and dictating to people, you know, how to live, how to, how to uh, 
uh, conduct our life affairs on a daily basis. And I'm sure that if we were to say, well, you know, if, is there some kind of um, undercurrent here at this powwow here, you know, about that? Well, uh, it could be. I'm, I'm not speaking on, on behalf of California Indians because I'm not a resident of this place here. Uh, but I, w I would assume that if there was any kind of undercurrent, maybe it might be implied that, you know, in a positive way, you know, that, hey, we're still here. You know, you, you didn't get rid of us, all of us.